Do you want to do pathfinding without using the navigation a agents? Stay tuned to learn how. Alright, so I may or may not be zooming in on the uh, left hand side there, but all I've got there is I just have a node 2D as my root node for this scene. I just have a tile map in here with my navigation layer set up. As you see here, I have navigation set up for all of these zones except for down this middle piece here. That way we have some kind of like obstacle to like go around so that you can see the path does work and it's not just cutting across everything. And then I just have a sprite 2D for my default position and I have a line 2D that I'm going to use to visually show the points. Now the only difference here is instead of showing the points obviously you're just going to move your character to each point but I'm just going to use the line to show you instead of completely moving my character and everything. Of course you guys know how to do that it's just adjusting your position property of it. Whether that's through twinning or whatever, but all right, here we go. We're gonna jump in, and I have this right now for GD Script and C Sharp. So regardless of which language uh, you're using for this, I got you covered. All right, so jumping in, we can start with GD Script, and we're starting out with a current path, and that's just gonna be a packed vector two array. So if you want to typecast that, that's the type for you. And I'm just do, putting this inside of my process. You can put this wherever you want. And I'm doing this every time I, I have the mouse held down. This is what we're gonna do. In my case, I'm just gonna be doing a click. Obviously, if you're doing this, you're probably gonna have an action assigned to it, and maybe just doing it on release. And I have a few variables here just to shorten down my overall code horizontal space. And for that, we're just getting the from position, which is my Sprite 2D's current position. So this could be your troops position or your player's position, whatever it is that you're moving. I have a two position set up. And that's just going to be wherever my mouse is located when I do my click. And that is also a vector two, of course. And then we're going to get our navigation map. And this is going to be an RID class. And to get this, we're just going to use get world 2 dget navigation map. And if you're doing this in 3D, there is a 3D equivalent of get world 3D get navigation map. I know we don't cover 3D or we haven't covered any 3D really on this channel, but just know that there is a 3D variation and it should be that exact same code still. And now we're going to set our current path variable that we created up top. And all we're going to do is we're going to set that to the navigation server 2D. And we're going to call map get path and that'll take a few arguments. The first argument is an RID, which is going to be our navigation map that we got based on our uh, the navigation that we set up on our tile set. We have our from position that we're going to start with, which we're using our Sprite 2D. This again, this could be your player or your troops, whatever you're moving. We have our two position, which is wherever we click. And then we have optimized path set to true. I'll show you the difference between true and false here in a moment. And then I'm just going to clear out all the paths that are on my line 2D. At the moment, that way we don't have a bunch of over overlapping paths going on. And obviously, if you're just moving your character, you're not going to need that. And then I'm just going to use a custom function that I created just called move, which of course for you, it would actually move your character. For me, it's just drawing out my line. And that takes in a pack vector to array that I'm just calling path. So inside of this function, we're just running a for loop uh, for P and path. And I'm just going to add that point to my line 2D. And I'm just setting the default color to red. You can, of course, set this to whatever you want if you wanted to visually show this. And I'm adjusting my width from the default of 10 down to 5. Alright, so if we were to go ahead and take a look at this and run it, we can see here it is. If I move my mouse because I'm just checking if it's pressed, I'm constantly getting a new calculated path here. 
Now, to show you the difference with optimization between being true and false, the best place to do this is uh, if I were to click right here, for example, you can see our path comes up. It kind of cuts that corner pretty close, continues on this diagonal line, cuts that corner really close, and moves up to point. Now, that could be great if that's what you're looking for, and notice we are avoiding the areas that do not have navigation set up on their tile set, or on their tile. Now, you can't see this, but I'm just going to go ahead and change my optimization path from true to false. And now when I click that same spot, you'll see what it looks like when the path is not optimized. All right, so we got a lot more on these straighter edges. We're not cutting those corners, especially not super tight, like we're doing on when the path has been optimized. Now, whichever route you want to go with that, true or false, is going to be completely up to you. And I do want to let you guys know one thing is, from what I've been told at least, because I haven't, obviously I haven't done this on large scales and small scales to uh, really test this out, but uh, from what I've been told by other users, using the navigation server like this to calculate a path, it's good and it's fine for uh, small areas, but if you have a huge a large open area then the navigation agents from what I hear is going to be better performance wise for you so if you if you're using this and your map starts getting large and you start running into performance problems specifically with your navigation here that might be something to consider moving over to navigation agents but if you're dealing with a small enough area that it's not going to really impact your performance this is how we use the navigation server and you can see the difference here, again, between true and false. All right. Now, for everyone on the C-sharp end, I'm going to go ahead and just remove that script and add the C-sharp version that I have on. And you see as I run this, it's going to work exactly the same. Boom, there you go. Now, I do have it set to true on this at the moment. But you know the difference between true and false right now, so that's fine. So let's go ahead and take a look at the code here. Now for C-sharp, all we're going to be using here is, again, we have our current path variable up here at the top. That is a vector 2, and we have our square brackets here because we want this to be a, a pool vector 2 array, right? an array of vector 2 points. Uh, again, same setup that we have in GDScript. We have our process function. I'm getting my mouse left button being clicked down. And while it's being pressed, we're getting or we're setting our from position and to position as vector twos based on my sprites position and my mouse position. We're creating an RID, which is our nav map, which we're using the same thing get world 2D, open and close parentheses, dot navigation map. And then we're going to use the navigation server 2D to calculate our current path by just calling map get path and passing in our nav map from position to position, followed by either true or false, depending on if you want your path to be optimized or not. And then I'm just going to clear out the points of my line 2D. That way there's no issues when or any leftovers when the path keeps changing and calculating. And then we run our move function with our current path passed in, which again is going to be a full vector two, just called path. And we're going to do a for each loop here. So for each P in vector inside of our path, we're just going to add a point. I'm setting my default color to being in red, and I set my width to five. And again, I can come in here and I can change that to false. And we can go ahead and run that. Perfectly fine. Same result. We just got to wait a moment for that to build. And there you go. So there's how you can go ahead and use the navigation server to do some pathfinding if you want to use that instead of navigation agents. There's the code in C sharp and GD script. All right. Take care. Have yourselves a good one. I'll see you guys in the next one. And if there's anything else you guys want to know, leave a comment down below and maybe we'll get to that in the next video.